Tabernacle, and then Pastor will be back on Wednesday night. So, uh, but before I start, I think I uh, shared with you that there was a community service, uh, a Rosh Hashanah service, uh, on Monday night, and so, uh, and that Kathy and I might go to that. Well, we did go to it, and it was different. It was definitely different than even what I expected to happen. So, uh, so my report back, if, if we go back to the message last week, uh, that was uh, the first thing that we had there. We had Rosh Hashanah and then uh, head of the year. Now, in Jewish perspective, the, uh, the head of the year was back uh, when uh, Adam and Eve came on the scene. So they're, they're going back all the way to there, and this is year 5783 from, uh, from their perspective. They also believe that the Messiah will come back in year 6000. So we only have 217 years to wait, except their calculations are wrong because we know that the Messiah has already been here once and the next time he comes it will be to judge and uh, to be in charge. So, uh, so that was the first thing that I saw. Now, you, you have your song books in front of you and you see how big they are. They're about that thick, right? They have for every one of these holidays a book about that thick, okay, for each one of the holidays. We were using the one for Rosh Hashanah last, uh, on Monday, and they have another one. I was looking on their bookshelf for, uh, for uh, uh, Yom Kippur and another one for Sukkot. And uh, they even build a Sukkot. Uh, but, uh, so, so that was a little bit different, um, and uh, and then we uh, they their perspective on the uh, uh, trumpets, of course, was uh, the blowing of the shofar. Now they did do that well, okay. In their book uh, that they had there, I guess there were I didn't quite get it, but uh, there were several pages of notes for the person playing the shofar to go through before they, uh, before they were done. So this guy was blowing that thing for, it had to be five or ten minutes, and, uh, and uh, I have no idea what it all meant, but he was doing it, and uh, uh, he did a fairly good job, too. So uh, did a much better job than I could have done, and so... Um, Let's see, and then, uh, what else did we study here? Oh, and then sovereignty. Well, I didn't see anything in terms of sovereignty uh, uh, during, the, uh, during the whole thing. What they talked about was kings and queens. And, uh, and I couldn't put that with the holiday. But uh, I guess that... Uh, that uh, some of the uh, the food for this uh, pomegranates and uh, the challah bread, the challah bread. Uh, is, anyway, that uh, uh, that has something to do with the kings and queens and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't know. Um, and so, uh, so that's what. Uh, uh, but we didn't. There wasn't anything that I saw or that I heard about sovereignty, about God being in charge of everything. And so, so it was a little bit different in turn, well, it was completely different uh, than anything that we had uh, talked about, and uh, which uh, was, I, I was really hoping for a little bit more, something, uh, and there, there was absolutely no scripture, uh, Bible scripture, even from the 
Old Testament perspective um, that he quoted or anything like that. So that was kind of uh, disappointing. I probably will not uh, accept another invitation to go to one of his stuff. Uh, we did that seven or eight years ago when he first came here for a Hanukkah celebration. And I know what Hanukkah is because I've done it and, you know, teach in my home. We've had people over and all that. When he did it that year, he didn't have anything. He didn't understand it. It didn't seem like he understood it. So anyway, I'll stick to this. I'll stick to this book. This is, this is where I need to be, and uh, just makes it a lot easier because this is truth, you know. And, uh, and so, uh, so tonight, uh, we're going to look at Yom Kippur, uh, the Day of Atonement. Uh, if you, when you were singing the song, uh, if you looked up on the top, it was under the, uh, the uh, area of atonement song. So, uh, and that's what we're talking about tonight. So, <clears throat> it says here, the uh, Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur begins on Tuesday uh, evening, 4 October 2022, at sunset, and goes to 5 October at sunset. The Day of Atonement, Levit Leviticus 16, is the most holy day on the Jewish calendar. Uh, today, we will see why. In uh, verse 29 of uh, Leviticus 16, it says this, And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your, you shall afflict your souls and, uh, and do no work at all, uh, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth uh, among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you uh, that ye may be clean from all sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you and ye shall afflict your souls by, uh, by statute forever. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead, shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar, and he shall make atonement for the priests and for the people of the congregation. This shall be an everlasting statute unto you uh, to make an atonement for the uh, children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, some uh, other passages that uh, speak to this is Leviticus 23. 27 through 32, and Numbers 29, 7 through 11. So, as we read that, what do you see as a problem for the Jewish people? What do you see as the problem? Once a year, that's true. Okay. think in today, today, yes ma'am, right, we don't have a temple, the temple is not here anymore, which means if we don't have a temple, we don't have the priest, and if we don't have the priest, we don't have the sacrifices, blah, 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 so all of that is wiped out, so the rest of this message, now we will see how we deal with this, and how the Jews of today will deal with this. Would you like one of these? So, uh, 
So our introduction is that Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is the most solemn day of the Jewish calendar. The Bible prescribed Yom Kippur as a day of affliction, Leviticus 16, um, and uh, 23, 26 through 32. In the ancient world, the high priest woke up early, donned his priestly garments, and sanctified a bull for both himself and his family. He then cast lots over two goats, choosing one for the Lord and designating the other as the goat to remove sin. Only on this day did the high priest sprinkle blood on the Ark of the Covenant before concluding the, uh, the sacrifices by burning both the bull and the goat the high priest placed the blood from the Lord's goat onto the second goat. Then he cast the goat into the wilderness, thus symbolically uh, removing Israel's sin. So, uh, so this is what would have happened in Jesus' day, okay? There still was a temple, there still was the sacrifices, and all those things could have been done, okay? Uh, course, you have to do what God says to do. Uh, the nation of Israel sometimes didn't quite meet up to the standard. Okay. Um, in modern, now, now here's, here's the part uh, that is kind of interesting. This is what a Jews might do okay, uh, uh, in modern day, today. In modern observance, Yom Kippur involves a fast from both food and drink. Uh, many spend the entire day praying uh, in the synagogue. During the ten days of awe preceding Yom Kippur, uh, many Jews, uh, Jewish people uh, give zedekah, or charity, which uh, some consider a replacement for the animal sacrifice. Now here's a good one. A small segment of Orthodox uh, Jewish community practices Kibarat, a ceremony in which a person waves a chicken over his head, killing the chicken as a symbolic transfer of sin. Uh, according to tradition, uh, according to tradition, the Book of Life and the Book of Death are closed on Yom Kippur. And the fates of those within the book are sealed for the coming year. So, uh, a lot of things here. Uh, the, uh, the fast, probably they'll do. Okay, fasting, uh, they'll do that. They will probably, uh, our, our folks and, uh, and most Jewish uh, folks will probably spend a day in, uh, in their synagogue, praying and, and doing that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, and during these 10 days prior to, they are probably uh, uh, looking at their lives and, and kind of thinking about what happened in this past year and where they need to go for the coming up year. And, uh, and so, uh, so, uh, so they're probably doing that too. I do not believe that they're going to do that, the animal, the, the chicken thing. I don't, I don't see our rabbi, at least here, I don't see him doing that. Although, he could do it. Um, um, but, uh, but then, when we took, when we look at the last part there about the book of life and about the book of death, I, I, I have a, a question. So how do you know which book you're in? See, there's, there doesn't seem to be a standard there in terms of are you in the book of life or are you in the book of the dead? Or that could mean what it means is that people that have died during that year are in the 
Book of the Dead, and those that are still alive are in the Book of Life. Don't know, and it doesn't really give us the, uh, really doesn't help us there uh, to, uh, to understand that. But, followers of the Messiah, that's us, uh, of the Messiah confidently look forward to the eternal life because our names are written in the book of life. When Jesus died, the veil of the Holy of Holies ripped in two, symbolically uh, breaking a barrier between humans and the presence uh, of God. Uh, previously, only the high priest had access to this room and only entered once a year on Yom Kippur. However, uh, Jesus' death uh, gives believers access uh, to God because he entered into the heavenly Holy of Holies to offer his blood uh, for our redemption. Unlike the Israelites' annual uh, sacrifices on Yom Kippur, Jesus won sacrifice uh, continues to provide atonement to this day. Uh, and uh, Yom Kippur for followers of Jesus reminds us of the certainty of our, our redemption through the blood of our Messiah and the high priest Jesus. And you know that's, that's really something that I'm afraid we sometimes take for granted. We, we know that we're saved. We know that Jesus lives within us. We have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us and stuff. But I think we sometimes think that, you know, well, okay, that's great. But there's a whole slew of people <coughs> in our community and stuff that don't know, that don't know about the, the, the Lord Jesus. And a lot of our Jewish friends. Most of the Jewish people don't know about, uh, about that. And we'll get to that in a minute here. Yom Kippur also reminds us of the ultimate salvation of the Jewish people. The prophet uh, Zechariah speaks of a day when the nation of Israel will recognize her Messiah and they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. When Jewish people recognize Messiah, as Paul writes, all Israel will be saved. The Day of Atonement thus uh, reminds us of our own salvation and also looks uh, forward to the salvation of Israel. God is not done with Israel. Okay? Uh, although God is dealing now with the church age. Uh, there will be a time very soon when we are raptured out and God will be dealing with the nation of Israel again. Uh, and we know that. What's, what's one of the first things that happens uh, when, the, uh, when the tribulation period comes? Trumpet sounds, yeah, okay. A little, a little farther. Push, push the, the, the thing over a little bit. All right, someone else. What, what happened? It's something that takes place that's going to benefit the the Jew. Something that God does. Yeah, first one in all day, okay? The 144,000. God cares so much about his children that he sealed 144,000 Jews who come to know Christ, and they go out and they tell people about Christ. Jews, Gentiles, this is how we see all these Multiple people get saved. And then, at the end of the uh, tribulation period, the forces of good and the forces of evil come against each other, and who wins? Yeah. 
good, you got it too. Uh, uh, I'm not sure where my, my folks were this morning. Uh, they were, because uh, they know all this stuff. Uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, the forces of good win. And who goes into the tribulation period? Uh, who goes into the millennial kingdom? Is there anybody that is not saved that goes into the uh, millennial kingdom? No. They're all, all, the, uh, all of the people that uh, do not know Christ will not be there. In other words, the nation of Israel, what's left of them, because many of them died during the tribulation period, are saved. Now, you may say, hmm, but there's that thousand years and the, uh, the people that uh, got saved during that time will be having children and all that kind of stuff. And so the nation might not be saved at the end of the thousand year reign. But what happens? The forces of good and the forces of evil meet again at the end of the thousand year reign. Satan pulls all of the people that he can that uh, have not trusted in the Lord Jesus. And God comes and he speaks and it's over. And then the nation of Israel is saved forever because there are no unsaved people anymore. All the all of the uh, people that uh, do not know Christ have been cast into the lake of fire. All the rest of us are in heaven. You see, we, if you, if you would look in your papers and you would look in, uh, uh, and you would listen to people, you'd say, the Jews are done, okay? Uh, people, uh, people don't care about them and, uh, and so, the Jews are done. Well, they're not done. Okay? They're, and they will, as the Bible says, they will be saved. Uh, uh, so, uh, and then, what are the elements of Yom Kippur? So there are uh, three things here. Yep. Three things. Uh, the afflicting of your soul. The word in Hebrew is ana, uh, and uh, uh, means to afflict, oppress, humble, be afflicted, be bowed down. This occurred, <coughs> occurs through fasting. God requires a fast to be humbled and afflicted on the Day of Atonement. Now, the next four things, prayer, confession, repentance, and renewal, these are a picture of a lost sinner searching for the Messiah, uh, Jesus, finding him, and confessing and repenting of their sins before him. And then the Sabbath, okay? Um, and and we, we kind of, uh, we kind of see Sabbath as a uh, bad thing because because we're not commanded to to uh, to have a Sabbath okay uh, there's nothing in the New Testament that talks about Sabbaths and and yet God gave the Sabbath to the Jews and they are supposed to continue to do this um, and and I write under here no work is to be done on this day on the day of Yom Kippur. Uh, there was a penalty for, uh, uh, for working on this day. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul uh, will I destroy from among the people. Leviticus 23 uh, through 30. The day was to be completely dedicated God. This is a picture of the rest we have in the Messiah. You see, we do have a rest, and it is in our Messiah who 
Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, uh, and we should take some time off, okay? Even though, even though it's not commanded that we do that, God had it for the Jewish people for a reason, because we all need to take some time off. We all need some downtime, okay? Most of us think we can run seven days a week, 24-7, and we can still be useful. I'm here to tell you, and I've got the years here, uh, I'm here to tell you that's probably not a good way of doing things. The atonement to cover, purge, and make reconciliation. The atonement was a reconciliation of the children of Israel to their God. This happened through the blood sacrifice of the uh, bullet and goat. The scapegoat was a picture of the sins of Israel being taken by the scapegoat. You see, the only problem now is that there's no scapegoat. There's, no, there's nothing that uh, to reconcile a Jewish person now to their God. So, uh, if you don't have something like that, you're kind of in a in a bad position because unless you unless you don't understand this stuff, which I think the Jewish people don't understand, that they they have a Messiah, that that Messiah has come, they don't want to listen to that, but. Uh, but they need, but the key is the reconciliation between God and man, or man and God, more to the point. This pictures, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this pictures what Jesus did on the cross. He paid the sin debt for all mankind through his blood sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. No, no more need for animal sacrifices. <coughs> no, uh, so, so that's the beauty. That's the beauty of what Christ did for us on the cross. It was a one-time sacrifice. When we place our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we repent of our sin and we trust Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we're his forever. And I... <coughs> I remember, I'm not sure how many of you remember, uh, Pastor did a, uh, a series of what happens to us when we, when we get saved. And he went through about 33 things uh, of the things that happen to us when we get saved. And it, it's really, it's a beautiful thing. God does some real work in our lives and uh, changes a person that uh, take up the Apostle Paul, who was fighting against God, and turned him around in just a second, and he was out there preaching for for uh, uh, for God, for God. and uh, and so uh, as we uh, the conclusion to this then is Yom Kippur is a day of reflection, <clears throat> it's a day of rest day of fasting, a day of renewal, a day of confession, a day of repentance of sin, uh, a day of reconciliation between a man and God, a day of atonement, and a day of salvation. Because truly, if you are, <clears throat> if you look at the Yom Kippur from, a, from the Bible standpoint, and from a godly standpoint, you can only come up with one thing, that that will lead, that atonement will lead to salvation because it's what God did on the cross for us. Do I have any questions or comments? No questions or comments. Let's uh, close in a word of prayer then. Father, thank you for, uh, for this study on Yom Kippur. Uh, we pray that uh, you would use this in our lives, help us to see uh, 
and to remember what Christ did on the cross for us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> sorry this was so short, but... Uh,